We Sergio Diaz and Skip Lovesy. Okay, we're gonna move for this one. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet Sergio. you too. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna sit up here. Okay. So I think you have a microphone there. Yeah. Yes. Because uh, there's three of us, so that's, okay. why, that's why we're moving for this. Change it up. No. Okay, uh, can you explain in two sentences the difference between sound editing and sound mixing? Okay. <laughs> Maybe not. But it's a two-part thing. It's like when you build a house. Uh, everyone put, you put the foundation and then you put the frame and all the wood and the, all the other parts. And that's the way we approach the film. As sound editors, we gather all the material and organize the material, and we go through all the material with the filmmakers. And then when all that is set and the, and the movie's ready to be mixed, then the mixing begins, and we adjust the level of every sound that we've gathered and created by the sound editors. Yeah, so, so yeah, what, what were you gonna say? No, 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 I don't know. Because basically, I mean, this is an oversimplification, but basically you gather the sound, so every time you hear a dog barking or an engine starting, you gather that, and you're the one that decides how loud that engine is and how much. You know, now I think most people who who haven't worked in sound think that there must be, when you see a, a scene, it's like there must be like eight to 10 sounds in, in that one scene. But I think that's really low, right? It, yeah. <laughs> but, okay. That's funny what you said there. <laughs> <laughs> the big challenge on this movie was uh, to create a uh, specific sound for, for that period of time. So Alfonso was very specific and to build and recreate all the, the sound for that period. So I started from 2016, I record the Mexico City in Christmas Day during 6 a.m. through 6 p.m. just to have the sensation of the of the city, and then I start with the the shooting. I took each car of the scene and or, or, or the locations, the house, and and I start I start building all the playlist for the post-production sound editorial. So, but you, because I've read that when you guys finally shipped the sound off to Dolby, it was like, it was like six times bigger than any file they've ever had before. Is that, but is that, is that true? Well, it is true. It wasn't the mission exactly, but <laughs> <laughs> as it turned out, um, the, the file is a combination of audio and also uh, Atmos uh, panning instructions, which are um, uh, embedded in the, uh, the uh, recordings that are not presented behind the screen, that are, but are presented around the room. The, where they are placed in the room is embedded in those recordings. So the usual um, number of audio tracks that we have for, until the Atmos system would be for audio from behind the screens and then several locations in the room. But the Atmos system has uh, five channels behind the screen. And in the room, there are a total of 64 destinations for audio. So the audio that we we just simply go, yeah, that should go there. Well, when we do the, me the mechanics of making it go there, all that information is a computer instruction that accompanies the audio into the theater. So we now have all these other information. We don't just have our normal 7.1, which was the the other most pro, uh, largest system is 7.1. So we essentially have roughly 10 times amount of audio for the movie. And so when we handed in our final product, it was like six times larger, and everyone said, this is a problem, there's a mistake. And, and no, it wasn't a mistake. It was actually just a, a really big mix. As it turned out. For that quiet movie, it turned out to be very, very big. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, actually, in this scene, the beach scene, we recreate the entire scene. All the dialogues are re-recording at, at the stage, uh, call it the ADR, and we put uh, all the dialogues in one part and all the atmospheres in another part just to get the separate audio track for Skip 
to do that on the Atmos Dolby mix. But now, again, when you talk about the ADR, additional dialogue replacement, yes. so that's like, like looping after the fact. But a lot of those actors were not professional actors. I'm guessing had never done that before. No. So it was a monumental challenge to do that <laughs> in, the, in the studio. So not only with that, with the, the main characters, actually with the big scenes, we have plenty of loop groups with more than 300 people on the stage. Wow. Um, Basically, the, the object of that mission was to have every person you could see very deep into the crowds who you could see they were talking was uh, Alfonso had written lines for them so that when you heard people on the street talking, even if they just passed by, they said something that Alfonso thought was appropriate to that particular moment. So all of those lines had to be re-recorded uh, with um, many, many group actors, and then we had to f place them all, of course, as well. And we had to place, we had to make them go by and go into the room and et cetera. But now, this is your first Oscar nomination, yes? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, I, <laughs> Thank you. This is, this is not your first. You, you won, I think, for Gravity, yes? That's right. Um, but again, I think a layman who saw Gravity and Roma would just think, oh, yeah, Gravity much, must have been much more complicated. Well, they're kind of <laughs> similar. Um, Gravity had a lot of rules because in space there are a lot of rules, like there's no air, so you can't hear anything. Uh, <laughs> but we had, um, we had a very big and bold and dramatic image, and if we just followed the rules, then it wouldn't be as much fun. So Alfonso and Stephen Price, the composer, had a brilliant idea of using non-traditional sounding music, so it wasn't symphonic, but it was more like synthesized. And then we broke the music down into various components and we made the music like if a satellite came in this way and crashed into something there. We would make a, uh, Stephen and Alfonso would make a musical sound that we could track with that image and then when it got to the, the uh, big event, we had these big other musical sounds. And so we really cheated that very, very big rule. And Roma has other rules. Roma has rules that we're trying really, really desperately to make the environment of the soundtrack make it as realistic and as inviting to the audience as we possibly can, uh, but we have no music. Here we have the opposite effect. <laughs> so we're telling the whole story with sound effects. Again, I, I think the, 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 the thing about that film is, again, it looks very simple, but it's, it's much more layered and complicated, and I think, obviously, that's really true of the of the sound work. So, I mean, congratulations on the film and uh, congratulations on your nominations. Thank, Thank you. you so um, much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. What, we, we'll talk to you later. Okay. Um, and now uh, we have a clip uh, because we're, we're honoring the composer um, uh, from Mary Poppins Returns. So let's see that clip. Thanks.